Good evening folks, Brian Salter here with Salter Racing Engines and tonight I'm getting back to my normal self which is uh, trying to educate people and be more serious. Um, so I got a call from Eric Weingartner yesterday. Uh, apparently he's, you know, he has said in one of his videos that he's trying to do some bios on the, the contestants in the cam challenge and so i guess he called me to get some information and when he called me i was running the drain lines for my new heat and air condition conditioning system in my shop uh, i just got it running a couple days prior and i need to finish the uh drain line so when he called i was in the middle of doing that and my head was nowhere near racing so um he asked me how i came about getting the camshaft numbers that i got and uh, I understand that question, but here's the question I don't understand. Um, I don't understand how all of a sudden now there is a right and wrong way to do it. Because you now have people saying that there's right and wrong ways to do it. And there might be wrong ways to do it i'm sure there is i know there is i outrun them every week um but there's more than one way to do it there are people who say well we get our information off the intake and exhaust opening and closing events and then there are people who say well i'm more of a duration lsa type of guy and let me explain something before there was computer software, nobody was intake valve opening closing events. You had to make the cam and put it in the block and put a degree wheel on it to find those numbers. So that means there was a way prior to intake valve opening and exhaust closing events. And it's over 100 years old. And it comes out exactly the same. If I move my lobe separation, guess what that changes? Intake valve opening, exhaust closing. What some people need to do is do what they're good at and stop telling everybody else they don't know what they're doing. Because anytime people want to put their records against mine, let's go. And I've been, like, very cool. But there are people who are, they get on here and they challenge me. And it's like, uh, I mean, hey, I'm not above being challenged. Just like this camshaft challenge. I think it's fun. I'm having a good time with it. Yeah, I want to win it. Sure I do. But I'm also having a good time with it. But don't think for one second that I don't know what's going on. Customer after customer after customer, we can give, uh, what do you call it, reviews? Record after record. Let's pull them up. When I move the LSA, I'm moving intake valve opening and exhaust closing. Go watch my video, Camshaft Technology. It was a very, I think it was the first video I ever did. Two months ago, because I've only been on YouTube two months. Why? Because I've been working for 30 years. I ain't had time for YouTube. I thought YouTube was dumb, to be honest. I thought, what a waste of time. And then all my friends are like, man, you need to do this. You need to do this. You, you got you know, all this experience. You need to do this. Do I know everything? No, I don't know everything. If I have the money and the assets, I will make multiple cams until I figure that thing out. You know what effects? If you say that intake valve, if we're going to go off those numbers only, then that means that once you pick that for that particular, I'm going to educate some people right now. There is no way that you could take those little numbers for multitudes of engines and say this is how I do it 
if you got a stroke in a crank the stroke of the crankshaft if it changes 15 thousandths 20 thousandths guess what your cam needs probably changed with it if your piston top if the shape of it is slightly different than a flat top or a dish or whatever the shape of that piston will affect the flow of that cylinder head guess what that changes my intake and exhaust events my combustion chamber design changes my intake and exhaust events my compression ratio changes my intake and exhaust events the fuel type changes my intake and exhaust events induction system changes my intake and exhaust events the exhaust system itself the shape the size the length how many components are in my exhaust the metal it's made of changes the flow of my exhaust and if all that changes guess what my intake and exhaust closings cannot be the same for every engine and no one said they were the same but some people act like well let's see i'm going to put this at 18 opening and uh i'm just making up numbers i don't know folks if it worked that way that easily there would be about four cams in the whole world but the fact is it don't work that easily and the fact is, way before people had computers to tell them these numbers, we had to make these cams and test them. And the only way you knew those numbers is when you got the cam from the manufacturer and put it in the engine and degreed it and found those numbers. You could not know those numbers prior to that. Because you did not know the load profile. And the only way to know the load profile is to put a lifter on the ramp and roll it around and see how fast it climbs and decelerates. Which is what modern cam doctors do now. Which we didn't have years ago. But yet somehow people were breaking records. And running hundreds of miles an hour. For hours on end. Without that information. No they had the information. But they didn't make cams that way. They made them the other way. With another thought process. The thought process is exactly the same. When you change duration and lobe separation, you're changing intake valve opening and closing events. So, for those of you that use intake valve opening and exhaust closing events, that's great. Great for you. Welcome to the 21st century. But you don't have to do it that way. I do it both ways. It's amazing to me. I do not have the right to tell you you are wrong for making your cam that way. And you sure as heck don't have the right to tell me I'm wrong for thinking the other way. Why? Because my records prove I'm right. And you'll find that our cams will turn out almost identical if you know what you're doing. Why can't we just all get along? Why can't we have a good time? Because if everybody's so great, then you just do your thing. And you'll be successful. You're not going to be successful trying to step on me because you can't step on me. It's just like these people with this vaccine. If you want to take a vaccine, go right ahead. If it if it makes you, you know, impervious to the COVID virus, then take your vaccine. Don't force it on me. You shouldn't be able to get sick now, right? You do your cam your way and I'll do it my way. But I do it both ways. It's amazing. If you haven't seen my first video, Camshaft Technology, it explains how LSA, ramp profile, all that stuff affects the overlap. Another thing, too. We didn't even talk about cylinder head ports. My gosh, if that don't affect intake and exhaust valve opening and closing events, I don't know what does. Guys, there are so many variations of head porting 
head shapes, runners, and, and the exhaust too. It all it's all the same. It's all it all counts as much as the other. Exhaust ports and intake ports count as much as the other. Intake manifolds alike. Man, let's just let's just do what we do and wish each wish each other well and uh yeah. But there's too many names in my in my barn um to say that, that I'm doing it wrong. Or that I shouldn't do it one of my ways. Because I do it multiple ways. And by the way, there is multiple ways to teach you math problems. And there's lots of ways to skin a cat. Just like there's lots of ways to skin a deer. You can ask any regneck or a live around and there's about five different ways they do it. Come on, man. All right, guys. There's my rant for the week. Have a good night.